Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I did not expect that to happen. Welcome back to the Cosmoto channel everyone, I'm Cosmo and today I'm going to be changing the fork seals on my 1978 Yamaha DT175. I actually need to swap these forks onto another bike, so this is a perfect opportunity to inspect them, do the seals, and uh, swap different forks onto the red DT. So here it is, it's all, uh, it's all ready to be operated on, it's still bent, still, still crooked, RIP DT. But I did go ahead and take out the spring from this tube before the video simply because I just wanted to see what I was getting myself into. I also drained some oil. Now this is probably like one-fifth of what actually came out of there. The rest was on the floor. So that was fun. I don't know how much cleaner I can be with the second one, but I will do it on camera. So if it is super messy, at least you guys can laugh at me or shake your head at me because there's probably an easier way to do it and I'm just dumb or at least haven't done my research enough let's get to it and get these fork seals out first and foremost I'm gonna lay down some cardboard because I don't really want to clean the floors again oh boy so many disassembled bikes man I really gotta put gloves on alrighty I got a splatter shield set up some under the tire there because that's where some of it went when I did the other one and uh... I guess now let's get to it. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to undo this bolt, the drain bolt, or the top cap bolt first, um, but I'll just do it the way I did it the first time. Definitely need a glove for this one. Forgot I should probably do this off the stand. Yeah, let's do this off the stand. Close that up. You can already tell this is going to suck. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yay. Like I said, not a lot goes into the actual jug. Now I'm going to undo the top bolt. It's a 17 mil. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I did not expect that to happen. Alright, let's get it on the stand ASAP. Jeez, that sucks. I am so smart. SMRT. What a shit show. Where'd the cap bolt go? Oh, jeez. Well, this is just dandy. There it is. That was stupid. Well, that was quite a fail, and I don't know if I'm happy that I got that on camera or disappointed that I got that on camera because now I have to show it to the world, and instead of just being disappointed in myself, I'm also embarrassed. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the wheel and uh, take off the individual tubes. And for the record, I think the better way to do this would have been to. Uh, basically take the wheel off first and then compress each individual fork until all the oil is out of it instead of letting all of the weight of the bike drop uh, drop the forks down however the service manual didn't really cover this topic too well so I just kinda winged it I suppose probably should have watched more YouTube videos go figure anyway on to taking the wheel off gotta take the brake cable out also got to undo these nuts under here. There we go. Hopefully the bike doesn't fall again. This is all so, so sketchy. I don't want to strap the bike to the stand because, I don't know, somehow I just feel like that'll make it worse. But I have to do this quick. I got to get these tubes out. I got to put the other tubes in and uh, yeah, get this thing back on its own two wheels because this is scaring me a little. Let's just lower it for you know, safety's sake.
just like that the old forks are out and before this thing falls off the stand I'm gonna put the 1979 forks on here I don't know where I'm pointing really hope they're the same diameter there's one way to check if they're the same diameter and that's actually measure but I think they're bigger pretty sure they're bigger that sucks oh well well guys I just measured and the 79 forks are 32 millimeters in diameter and the 78 forks are 31 millimeters in diameter meaning they will not fit these triple trees meaning I gotta swap the whole whole steering steering assembly out which is fine but I did paint these ones for the trail bike which the 78 forks were gonna go on and now they're gonna go on the bike that's not gonna get touched for a while so got a bit more painting to do that's okay um, I'm just gonna get to it because there's no point in wasting time it appears I've started a video about replacing seals on a 1978 Yamaha DT175 and halfway through the video found myself doing a full front end swap uh, basically what I wanted to do is just take out the 1978 forks and swap in the 1979 tubes you know not take the triple trees off nothing um, unfortunately I very quickly realized that the 1979 forks are one millimeter thicker so I had to swap out the whole steering assembly um, I didn't film any of it because this is not what this video is about <laughs> but it's done now the bike has a 1979 front end which has longer travel as you can tell by the raised axle point um, yeah it's a nicer suspension it's gonna be sweet when this bike is uh, being built up but I'm gonna rebuild the 78 forks to go on my trail bike which is the silver bike anyway now that that's done I need a break I'm gonna clean up the shop and let's proceed with the seal replacement alrighty guys let's get straight into the seal replacement let's not waste any more time uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is take out the tubes from the lowers and the reason I'm going to do that first is because I have to take off these metal covers and while taking off the metal covers I don't want to scratch up the, the tubes so the way you take off the tubes is there's a bolt on the bottom of the fork that uh, you just have to undo so let's do that ha. good luck right probably should have done this on the bike Oh yeah, this is not happening. I have vice. I have a wooden vice actually. I don't feel like repositioning the camera, so I'm just gonna go quickly do this. That's one. Well guys, it's hard to tell, but that uh bolt head is stripped. So I guess the previous owner tried to do that and failed. Um I guess I gotta try and extract that out now. I really hope it works. <laughs> Can't even get the extractor low enough because of these bolts, of these studs, I mean. Man, that sucks. I need a really long extractor, I guess. I suppose I'm gonna have to wait to do the seal replacement on the other fork until later, until uh, after I can figure out how, how I can get that bolt out. But for now, let's just focus on this one. Let's focus on what we can do. <laughs> let's uh, finish getting that bolt out of there and get the fork tube out Come on. it's a grimy one let's take the fork tube out don't know how this works what do I do? the instructions were unclear nice, more oil oh, let's get that all out of there but seriously, how does this tube come out? I'm such a noob oh, there we go Jesus that's scary. Well, clearly there's some damage there. Guess I'm just gonna put this aside for now. It's just scary stuff. <laughs> I don't like taking my bike apart. No, it's fun. It's all fun. All right, yeah, I'm gonna put this away for now. I've got the fork lower in front of me, I have the service manual, and now I have to get this metal cap off. The service manual actually tells you to use a flathead screwdriver, which is crazy to just, you know, uh, kind of wedge it in here and tap at it with a rubber mallet so I guess I'll try doing that really hope this works and I don't just end up breaking more stuff I don't like that one bit man all this hammering on suspension parts come on guy why why did you guys have to do this 
that's so dumb. Alrighty guys, I got the cover off, I just used a big screwdriver and I pried it out like this. It came out really easily, so that's good. Nothing's damaged, that's always good. Uh, let's proceed. I'm gonna wipe this down because it's really, really dirty. I'm gonna put this aside for now, it's gonna get cleaned with the rest of this stuff. This stuff's getting taken out, but I just want to clean it a bit before I touch it. Yeah, so much muck. Let's see if I can get this thing out. Perfect. Got to get this retaining ring out now. Now I'm wondering what the best way to do that is because I don't want to damage the tube. That's actually not that bad. Oh jeez. That almost flew into my eye. I'm wearing safety glasses for the next one. How do we get this guy out? I'm just gonna put a glove on and try and squeeze it out. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Alrighty. I'm going in. I'm just, this is gonna end badly. Need some sort of like a clamping tool that clamps it from the inside. Really should stop poking at it. It's not gonna end well. Maybe I can 3D print a puller. Maybe I can do that. Alright, let's get to the drawing board. So it's a couple of hours later and I have 3D printed this little tool that will hopefully help me get the seal out. Uh, I can't take credit for the design, I just saw an animation on YouTube or rather Google and uh, designed my own. I hope it works. Uh, I did leave a wider space in here in case this guy's too flimsy. Hopefully that's good, so let's give it a try. <laughs> Definitely too flimsy. I gotta print a thicker one and then it might work. I printed a thicker uh, wedge, pry, bar, whatever you want to call it and hopefully this one doesn't break. If it does, I think I might have to... I don't know if printing a thicker one would help. We'll see how this one performs but I might have to just resort to uh, some other crude methods because this is taking too long. Nope, now the tip cracked. I'm not sure what to do guys. I basically created a puller type deal. I have a threaded rod with some washers there and I had a toe strap as you can see. I didn't film that because it was getting kind of sketchy so I just took it off. Uh, but I had a toe hook through here, one on the other vise and I had it really tight and it just it still wasn't going. The seal wasn't coming out. Um, I was tapping at it with a hammer so it's getting pretty ridiculous. So it's the next day, I got really sick of trying to get this seal out. I talked to some really wise people on the Yamaha Enduros forums and they reinforced my idea that I need to use heat to get the seal out. And I did use heat and I did get the seal out, so I'm really happy for that. I, uh, I heated up this part of the fork, I guess fork lower, and I used my fancy uh, washer puller to get the seal out. I also had uh, you know my tension set up, but I'm sure you could probably use a hammer or something like a rubber mallet to get it out of there. Uh, I will film the process of disassembling the other fork uh, a little bit more in depth. Uh, I just you know I had to do this off camera. I was getting sick of trying things and recording them and they're not working and nobody wants to watch that. So this isn't even really a how-to at this point. It's just you know, me struggling with basically everything you could probably struggle with when rebuilding these forks. So anyway, I'm really happy. I can clean up this fork lower now and I can get to working on the other one. So I did some work on the other fork off camera and I actually ended up getting the other bolt out. I wanted to do it off camera because I wasn't sure exactly how to do it. I tried two different methods and only one worked. The first method was this putty right here. I tried to adhere a bolt, which is right here. I try to adhere this bolt to the head of this bolt, but I guess I didn't prep the surfaces well enough because it, as you can see, broke right off. Uh, so then what I did was I uh, extended this extractor via the means of an Allen bolt. I guess, I don't know where it is now, but I used an Allen bolt and I extended the extractor. I managed to get the extractor in there and get the, the fork bolt out. Uh, luckily, the only good thing that the previous owner did was already drill the bolt out, so I just had to use the extractor and, you know, just get it in there well and make sure it grips. So, here we are. I'm really happy. 
I've got the fork lower separated from the tube. There's the other one. Uh, here are the tubes. As you can see, this tube is damaged. I, uh, I'm a little upset about that, but you know, we'll have to make do with what we got. Uh, this tube looks okay. I will check this one to make sure that it's not bent from the crash. Actually, I'll check both. Um, I did notice that one of these uh, tubes was missing this aluminum piece over here, but after looking inside this fork lower, and it's really hard to see, but it's in there, so I'm glad I'm not missing that. Um, now I'm going to proceed to getting this guy disassembled. i got to get that cover off and the seal out. So let's get to it, I guess. As you guys can probably tell, I feel pretty done with this fork rebuild at this point. Uh, I'm pretty upset with the way the previous owner took care of these things as well. Uh, the insides of uh, the seal journals where the seals sit are gouged and it's just, it's bad. It's going to take some time to clean up and I wasn't going to take time to clean them up, but you know, I'm so pissed off that I'm just going to do these things justice and if, uh, if they're on their last breath here, then at least I'll I'll give them a good send off. This thing's still a little hot, but let's see if I can show you the gouges that I'm talking about. There's some right there. I don't know if there's better light somehow. Hard to tell. There you go. There's a big gouge there. Gouge there. Ah. Needless to say, this thing needs some TLC. Both sides do. Um, I'll get it there, it's just, it's been taking me a while and I just want to ride, but this fork rebuild has literally been going on for days, but I'll stop complaining now, let's clean all the parts up, uh, use some brake cleaner, clean the tubes, clean the springs, uh, clean the lowers, clean everything, and reassemble. So all the parts are finally clean. I've uh, polished the fork lowers, even though I'll probably do it again because they're going to get a bit dirty during reassembly. I have all the replacement components. I ordered two of the fork lower bolts because I figured uh, the other one was on its way out as well. So might as well replace both. Uh, now the first thing that I have to do is put new seals into the fork lowers. Hopefully this goes in easy enough. I did deburr uh, some of the burrs on the inside of the surface because the previous owner did some funky stuff. So hopefully it goes in okay. Uh, I don't have any sort of seal driver so I will be trying to use this piece of PVC pipe to knock it in or uh, I guess maybe a socket. I am not sure yet. But first let's try and get this guy as far as we can with our fingers. Oh, I forgot a critical thing actually. Oil. Oil the outside of this. The fork oil that I'll be using is this Motul Medium 10W. I also have a heavy 20W, but I figure I'd use the lighter stuff because I do like softer suspension. I can always uh, swap it out, I guess. It's going to be a waste of money, but I can also always add more of the 10W to make it a little heavier, or rather harder. So yeah, uh, let's use some of this stuff to put around the seal. Let's get this guy in there, first by hand, and then we'll tap it in. Now I take my trusty PVC pipe, and hopefully this works. <laughs> it's not going in. Oh, it's going in slowly. I might cut this shorter so that it absorbs less impact. It's much shorter now, let's give it a go. I think this guy's finally in. That was a bit of an ordeal. Just as everything with this rebuild, it seems. <laughs> uh, you live and you learn, right? Now I want to put the snap ring back in. One of these guys. 
let's do the other fork or fork lower rather I think for this fork I'm going to heat it up first um, as I think that did help with getting the other seal in uh, if I had done it from the beginning then I think it would have gone in much smoother so let's do that now let's try and get this guy in by hand first as far as it goes the thing about this one is I don't want to be whacking on these studs too much Maybe I don't have to be. That was going in much smoother. Oh, that went in so much smoother. I really hope I didn't mess up this guy because I really whacked at it for a while. And I don't know if I recessed the seal inside its enclosure too much or I don't know. But you live and you learn. If I have to rebuild this one then I guess I'll just rebuild it again. So now that the seals are in, it's time to put the tubes back into the fork lowers. But first I'm going to put some Loctite on these drain bolts. Just so that they do not come out under vibration. Now it's time to put the fork tube back in the fork lower. I'm gonna slip this through here. Go until it bottoms out. Gonna use the spring to push this inner tube as far inwards as possible. I have my uh, set screw, I suppose. I have my crush washer. I'm gonna put some thread lock on there. And hopefully, this goes in no problem. Something tells me it has not gone in. Ooh, finally got it. That was an ordeal. <laughs> this guy actually gets cranked down to, I believe, 10.4 foot-pounds. So let's give it 10.4 foot-pounds. Might need a might need a vice. So now that is done, I'm going to put the dust seal over and put the, I guess, metal cover over. These guys are pretty banged up, so couldn't really save them. I mean, I, they work just fine, they're just a little banged up from people trying to pry them up. Alrighty, this one is good to go. Let's do the other one, but I'm not going to record it because this has been a long process as is. You guys saw how to do it. Uh, it's exactly the same for the other one. So, three, two, one. Just like that, the second fork is done. Now it's time to put the oil in and we're finished. So, let's do that. I can't wait. This has been so long. <laughs> So I've got the four coil ready, like I said I'm using Motul 10W, uh, you can use 20W as well, the service manual calls for both. It also calls for 146 plus or minus 2 cc's of this stuff uh, per fork leg. Basically what I'm going to do is measure out 150 because it's easy on the scale here on the back of the bottle. And then I'm going to equal out both forks to make sure they've got the same amount of fluid in there because that's really the, um, the part you should worry about. It's not how much each one has. It's that they have to match. So let's get into it. I've got the fork fully compressed. Alrighty, I think that's enough. Now I'm going to work the fork up and down just to distribute the oil everywhere in all the crevices. should be good. Now let's see how far down we need to use my little tool here. Basically what this does is it sets, it's a homemade tool, I'm just trying to mimic what I saw in Digital Rider's video. He's got a proper motion, I think Motion Pro, yeah Motion Pro tool. Um, I just made this myself right now. I have yet to secure this as it 
you know, determines the distance this tube goes down into the fork tube. But let's, you know, let's see how far it, at, at what point it basically starts sucking up fluid. Nope. Oh yeah, there we go. Not the most accurate of tools, but it'll do. So now we just insert it here and suck out the so-called excess. So well, this guy is good to go. We can put the spring back in and tighten up the top screw. <laughs> this is tricky. That's one. It's not fully tight, but and we can do these up uh, to tour when they're already in the bike. Let's do the second one. Once again, approximately 150, but this one won't matter too much because we have our level setter right here. Hopefully that's good. Uh, first time doing a fork rebuild, by the way. Like, one like this. I have done uh, an R6 fork set before, but for some reason that was a lot easier, and I don't think I actually ever filled them with oil because I never used them on anything. But, yeah, true story. Let's get the spring up into this guy. Ah, it's dangerous business. There we go. And that's that. Done. Done. It's over. It's done, it's finished. Done. Finished. Well, there you have it guys. This has been a long process. I've been doing this for what feels like weeks. I've probably been doing it for about two weeks, uh, running into all sorts of issues, basically into every possible issue you could run into doing this kind of stuff. I ran into it and it sucks, but at the same time, it's also a good lesson. Uh, I learned a lot. I know exactly what to do next time. So I'm trying to not, uh, you know, stress about it too much. It is done. The forks are good to go. They're good to go to go back on the bike. And I'm exhausted. I'm just excited that they're done. <laughs> I keep repeating myself. I'm tired, guys. Um, stay tuned for the next video. It will probably be my trail bike getting built from the ground up. So that's going to be really cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can hardly call it a how-to, but uh, you can definitely, you know, appreciate the process. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.